Hey, welcome back to the channel. So here I am again with my trusty 2012 MacBook Pro, and I wanted to take a look at it with some of the most popular Linux distributions. So I'm gonna do this series where I'm just gonna go down the list and look at like the top 10 distributions that are on DistroWatch right now and see how they run on this older machine. I'm also gonna be doing this on a couple other older computers like a Surface Pro 3 and things like that. So if that's of interest to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I put those out. But for right now, let's jump right into this and look at this 2012 MacBook Pro running MX Linux 23.2. So I'm going to do a separate video on the actual installation of this. This is just to talk about the performance. Installation is super simple. And the great thing is that afterwards didn't have to set up any special drivers or anything. Everything worked out of the box. All the ports work, except I haven't been able to test the Firewire port. Uh, but the Wi-Fi worked out of the box. Even the camera works. If we just uh, open up a camera app here we can see that this camera app does indeed work. It's crappy, it's a crappy camera, but you know, it works if you need it. Um, there's other ways to use, you know, your Android phone or your iPhone as a webcam for uh, Linux. I have a video on that. I'm working on an updated version of that video, but if you wanna check that out, that's also an option that's available. But just talking about this, the uh, default desktop on MX Linux is a very uh, aesthetically pleasing desktop. I have the default installation here where it's just using XFCE. XFCE is a super lightweight Linux distribution that works great on this computer. Now the default theme that MX Linux has built into this version of XFCE is very aesthetically pleasing, but uh, you can change it however you want. If you want it more Mac-like where you, you know, have kind of the uh, information at the top and then a dock at the bottom, you can totally set that up and you can do it all through graphical tools. You don't have to jump to the command line for anything. So let's look at a little information about our system. If you just hit the command key to bring up the menu and then type in system, we can bring up some system profiler and it gives us all the information about our computer. This is the MacBook Pro with the i5 3210M processor. It's got 16 gigs of RAM and it's got the just the Intel uh, HD graphics 4000. If you had the dual graphics one, it would show you information about the uh, graphics card. Now, the cool thing is you can use this with an external uh, GPU, but even when you use it with that, it doesn't show you the graphics card that is in that external GPU, even though you could still use it. So that's a little interesting, but um, it does work with external GPU out of the box. But the performance is great on this. We have uh, Firefox as the built-in web browser, and you can load other uh, web browsers on here if you want. We can open up our file explorer, which is Thunar in this distribution. If we just hit the command E, it brings that up and we can navigate through all our folders. We can uh, connect out to network drives if we want. Like I said, everything works out of the box. Even the optical drive works great. Now, one thing that's really nice about MX Linux is the uh, tools that they have built in. So if we bring up MX tools here, we have, a, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but we have a bunch of tools that make it much easier to manage your Linux system. And a lot of things that you would normally have to jump out to the uh, terminal for, you can do right from a graphical application here, which if you're transitioning from a Mac, that's something that you're gonna be used to. We can go, we can even create our own uh, live USB. We can configure the system how we want and make a live uh, USB that we can boot off and run that system and it'll be in the configuration that we have set up, which is really nice. There's other items in here for uh, setting your theme, managing your drivers, managing your services. Now, another thing that you're probably used to if you're transitioning from Mac OS or even Windows is you use the app store that's built into the operating system. Now, this is no different. There is an app store here. If we start typing uh, MX package installer, we can see it here, launch it up. And we have a list of curated uh, applications that are in the repositories that we can use to just download right from here. Like if we want the uh, GIMP image editor, we can type in GIMP and then we can select the basic or a full package that has some extra plugins and stuff. If we want a uh, video editor, we can type in Kden Live and we can download Kden Live right from here. If we want to uh, do some art, we're 
we can get uh, Krita, or we can get something like Blender. All these applications are in here. Say we want to record or stream, we can get OBS. It, it goes on and on. And these are just in the repository, the popular applications that are curated in the repositories. And then we can go to the enabled repositories and look for even more details, you know, starting with OBS. We can go to a test repo. So things that are not, you know, kind of officially stable or in the official repos, we can get them from here. And then we can also get flat packs. Flat packs are kind of packaged applications that are distribution agnostic, meaning you can download a flat pack and run it on whatever system you're on, whether you're on Debian based, you're on Fedora, uh, you know, you're on Arch based, whatever distribution you're on, you can run these fat flat packs. Most uh, modern distributions will support flat packs now. So out of the box, this distribution comes with a lot of helpful applications. If we just hit that command key to get into our menu, we can see that we have a bunch of Office tools. So we have the full LibreOffice suite, which is a off, uh, Microsoft Office compatible Office suite that works really well. We have a few games installed, a few graphics tools, uh, multimedia tools, and then uh, accessories some of these i've added like this app image launcher i've added that and that's kind of the point there's a lot of tools in here that are extremely useful but if you don't want any of them you can easily uninstall them and if you want more there is a great graphical tool within this distribution that lets you easily install additional applications another thing i wanted to show you is if we go to the mx linux website and then we go to the downloads area there's a few different options here so there's the MX23.2, which is uh, the X64 version, which is the version that I have installed on here. There's a 386 version, which is the 32-bit version. There's really no reason to download that one for this computer. And then there's the AHS version, which is the advanced hardware support. That's really for more recent devices, so you don't really need it for this. In fact, if you get it for this on the newer kernel, some things like the camera may not be working, and it even uh, tells you what's going on here. Uh, release for very current hardware with the 6.6 .6 kernel and newer graphic driver and firmware. So when you download it, just get the X64, whatever version it is at the time you're watching this, just get that X64 version, burn it onto a USB, boot off it, and uh, you're off and going. Like I said, I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to actually install it, but this was just a quick video to show you that it does run here and it runs extremely well. If you have any questions or comments or want me to try a specific distro, let me know down in the comment section. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it and haven't subscribed and want to see more like this, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for coming by.